que it would be enough. I don't want you running out of here. <laughs> did, did, did they say 12? If I was to go home, I would travel with that cake. <laughs> People would ask me for this cake, and I would not share it. And I'm going to miss my carrot cake. Uh, that was definitely for me. Uh, my name is Larry. Excuse me. And they used to call me Blood. I know Beverly Ma a long, long time, you know, about 30 some years. I know when uh, she first moved on Drayton Avenue, you know, her sister Mary was our house and uh, I was homeless. I had no place to stay or nothing. And uh, her and her sister, you know, they gave me a place to stay in the basement, you know. And um, she always looked out for me. She wasn't just a friend, she was like a sister. We used to have an early morning conversation because she was a country girl. She had to get up early in the morning and drink some coffee and we used to talk, you know. And she always tell me, say, hey, what you been doing? You know it ain't right, you know. But um, she always looked out for me, her, her sisters, the whole family. And uh, it's something that you can never forget. And she is a very special lady, and I love her. And I'm gonna miss her, and thank you. Thank you. 
Poe, and we were Shonda, and we were greatness, and her nickname for me was Bessie. And um, I'm just going to say thank you, because uh, I remember being a little girl. She would get me ready for school and help my grandmother get me ready for school. So thank you. I'm going to miss you. This is a story that my mom told me recently. Um, when I was younger, I used to come to Boston and visit my grandmother, visit my father, and sometimes my cousin. And she'd be like, oh, I'm going to stay up here together. I'm like, no, I'm not going up there. And then she lived in the third floor of her And I'm like, no, I'm not going up there. Because she used to tell me that she was going to take my grandmother's insulin needles and stick me with it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, I'm not going up there. <laughs> because I was just getting needles. I hated, you know, going to my cousin and stuff. So she, somebody told her that I was getting needles. So I used to be like, no, because she used to get the needle and actually come with me after it. So I was like, there's no way. But then my mother recently told me that um, when I was little, um, when I used to come like, as a toddler, I used to cry to go upstairs with her because she had the same type of like jerk curl as my mother's mother. <laughs> so we get a small child, I recognized the jerk curl and I was like, oh, like I want to be up there with her because she got the jerk curl. <laughs> and so like, and no one ever told me that until recently and I wish that I would have the opportunity to say, I remember when I was small and I used to want to like you do because when I got older, I didn't want to go up there. So she probably had like, you know, a little brush would be like, you used to sit up here with me all the time. Like now you don't want to go up here anymore. So that's what, that's my little, you know, funny story that I'm going to with me. That's my last name. I'm um, my Nana's second oldest grandkid, and I just want to say um, thank you to my Nana because I don't know where I would be today without her, and um. I've lost the words. My Nana, she was a, a, a very good woman, and it really hurts me that she, you know, she she's gonna be, you know, resting and she's gonna have peace now, cause that's all she ever wanted. And I just wanted to say, you know, thank you, Nana, for everything you did to, did for me. That's it. Right now, 
First thing she'll say is, I don't like any people in here. <laughs> <laughs> love each and every one. I think the same thing, I don't like you people. But <laughs> that's something we have in common. I'm going to miss my sister. I live 1,500 miles away and every week. T-Mobile is going to be very mad. They won't not have any more two-hour phone calls. <laughs> I won't hear her call me mother anymore. <laughs> but you people, I love. I try to keep in touch with you. I try to watch your lives as you grow. They always want me to continue to do that. She loves you. She loves each and every one of you. She be strong. Be happy. You will get past you. You will never forget us. But you are growing your appreciation for us. I love you all. Every one of you. And I miss you now. I'm not done. I'm not done. I'm gonna tell you for a 
part. I'm not done. <laughs> this is my Nana's son. Alright? But well, all I want to say is I repeat to my Nana. I love you. She's always in my heart. Thank you very much for coming. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, I don't know what to say right now. Nina really loved me. She took me everywhere when I was a baby. Everybody know that. I'm the favorite. <laughs> I love everybody, like my brother son you say. You know, she wants all of us to graduate. And another thing, I graduated first. You know, she's got to go out of the way. everybody. Need to do that. But I really miss her right now. And like, I can't cry. I don't know why I can't cry, but it's probably going to hit me later. Because I was always there and I always, you know, always wanted me to do right. And I sat there. And, you know, I tried my best, but, you know, I could have tried a little bit more what she wanted me to. You know, I'm sorry for that. You know, I don't want to argue with my mother. I don't want to argue with my brothers no more. I just want the best for us. And the best for everybody else that's here. Thank you for coming out for my grandmother. I'm the second daughter, and this is my best friend. She did everything for me and my kids, too. She took my son and has a grandkid. She didn't have to. He don't belong to her, but physically, she do. Bev, I'm going to miss you. You was my world. I'm going to miss talking to you. I can't run no errands for you no more. I can't, I can't do nothing for you. Ah! I wish you were still here. I'm lost. I, I can't talk to you. I have so much stuff to tell you, and I can't tell you no more. Nadia, you're my best friend. I love you. And Dougie, my baby father. Tired in the house. I know he had it. Say, Tired is. Tired
Uh, this woman cared for people, cared for her children, her grandchildren, great grand, and, and how she just loved and, and even at the odds of others being disappointed, others trying to change her mind about how to do things. There's something about unconditional love that we just don't understand sometimes. But you see, I, I, I'm inclined to believe and I can say with confidence that when God brought her into this life, there was a purpose that God had and a plan for her life. That she would be this kind of person with the kind of unconditional love, unselfish love. That she would be able to endure hard times, not just for herself, but for anyone that came into her life. Now, I'm not one that gets into preaching about folk that I really don't know, but I'm, I'm just led to say these things because I understand that she went through some suffering. And let me tell you how God is. God, uh, he does something what we call signs and wonders. In other words, God gives signs and we wonder what they mean. Amen? Amen. And, and I found that, that, that as, as the conversation started with Doug, one of the first things I found out was that she was on dialysis. And, 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 and immediately I, I began, I heard the sign and the word, and the wonder was, well, guess what? So was I. And I understand, so God made it, made it plain and made it so that the person that would do her eulogy could identify with her suffering. Amen? Amen. That's because God does all things well. Amen? So in 2009, I got sick and lost my kidneys. And I was on dialysis for nine months. Praying and believing God to give me a kidney or fix the ones I had. I remember the first day I went in, I told the technician, I said, I don't know how long I'm going to be here. I said, but I know one thing, my God is going to heal me. My God is either going to give me another kidney or he's going to heal the kidneys that are inside of me. But I want you to understand that God is also a God with a sense of humor. Because I found out, amen, nine months later, six months later, my wife went down to find out if she could give me a kidney. And the thing was, she went down not knowing what her blood type was. And when she got there, she, they, they, they took her blood and they did the work. And that Friday they called up and they said, not only can, are you a match to give your husband a kidney, but they said you are an international donor. You could give anybody a kidney. And so I realized, I said, wait a minute. You mean to tell me, God, that all this time I've been praying and waiting, God, and knowing and believing, my name was moving up on the list, but I was a rare type called B+. Plus. It made me a, 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 a higher on another list because it was a rare blood type. But God, I said, look what you did. All the time, my kidney was laying right next to me. My blessing was laying right next to me all the time. But I say this to say that being on dialysis was a suffering way. It wasn't fun to watch my blood going through, through back and forth, going in and out of my body. It wasn't fun going home every day after dialysis and feeling weak and passing out sometimes because my blood pressure was too low and they took too much fluid off my body. It wasn't fun just knowing that I had to go home and go to sleep for the rest of the day so I could feel better on the next day. It wasn't fun to know that I couldn't be with my family like I wanted to be with my family. But I want you to understand when God gives you that kind of purpose in life. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what you're suffering. You're going to still exemplify the love of God for your children, for your grandchildren, and for everyone in your life. So I stand here today as, as a living testimony. Praise God that God is able to do all things and God does all things well. So God found, he found it fit, amen, to call our dear sister home. You know why? Because God knew what she was going through. God understood what she was going through. But even through the test of time, because the Bible says, God said that in my weakness, you are strong. You got to get to a place and understand that there are people in this world, no matter what they're going through, they're always going to exemplify the love of Jesus Christ in their life. They're always going to be able to rise above their own situation to deal with your situation. So I want you to think about who this is laying here behind me and I want you to remember one thing. She had the kind of love that always gave and didn't have to necessarily receive. She had the kind of love that was, her heart was poured out for those that didn't know their way and couldn't find their way. And she was always there to give an encouraging word. Somebody ought to give God a hand praise. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Let me tell you something. 
when you know God, you don't have to know everybody. But you can see the love of Christ in other people. And you can know that they got God in their life. Yeah. So I thank and praise God that the Bible says that we're coming into a time now. If the times are evil and men's hearts are wicked, praise God. But we're coming into a time now what we call the last days. And in the last days, we got to make up our mind. For Christ I live and for Christ I die. we got to make up our mind. Hallelujah. See, because she already made her mind up. And she's already, her decisions are already made. But there are those of you sitting in this room tonight and you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And you're going through things and you don't understand why. But I want you to understand one thing. All things work together for good for them that love God and that are called according to His purpose. See, I once was a drug addict and an alcoholic. A whoremonger and did everything I thought I could do and was big and bad enough to do. But let me tell you something. God will bring you to a place of humility. Because I lost all my hustle. I lost all my girlfriends. I couldn't buy no more drugs because I didn't have no more money. But thanks be to God. Hallelujah. He sits high and looks low. But that's where the Lord God be found. Somebody said his arms are not too short that he couldn't find me. I was so low I didn't have nowhere to look but up. But I thank and praise God that he loved me so much that he had the kind of love that she had in her heart. And that he reached down and picked me up, turned me around and placed my feet on solid ground. Somebody ought to get happy in here tonight because God is good and greatly to be praised. Somebody give God a hand praise. Is one enough. Time is one enough. Christ is soon to return. Amen. Amen. And we need to get our lives together yeah. now. Amen. Amen. See, we don't know when we're gonna close our eyes. Right. We don't know when we're gonna take that last breath. Amen. Amen. She took the last breath. She made the choice. It's up to you now. See, we don't preach to those that are already gone. We preach to those that are left behind. Amen? Amen. Because if you want to see it again, you got to get it right before you take that last breath. Amen? The wine is saying a song, tomorrow, tomorrow. Who promised you tomorrow? You don't know if you're going to wake up tomorrow. As I said earlier, it's a point on the man wants to die. Wants to, wants to die and after that the judgment. But man that is born of woman is but a few days and full of trouble. Don't let your last days be without God in your life. The love that she exemplified is a love that she carried through this room and in every heart. Because trust me, if you haven't suffered enough, your way is coming and your time is coming. All I can say is live long enough. Live long enough and you'll know what she went through. May not be the same kind of pain. May not be the exact same kind of trouble, but hard times will come. But the Bible says weeping may endure for a night. Joy coming in the morning. She's in her morning now. She's done all her crying, shed all her tears. And for many of you, guess what? Those tears were for you that she shed. Not for her, for you. Trying to help you get it right. Trying to get you on the straight and narrow path. And you know what the Bible says? God collected her tears as prayers for you. That you might make it in life. Amen? Amen. Let's give God another hand for you. The God of all grace, who have called you into eternal life, eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after... You have suffered a while. See, that's just, that, that, that's, that's the hard part. I'm done. But the good news is that he will perfect you. He'll establish you. He'll strengthen you. He'll strengthen you. Now listen, we don't reach perfection until we get here. Amen. Amen. Because if we get here with a right relationship with Jesus Christ, we'll stand before him perfectly. The Bible says we're going to take off mortality and put on immortality and forever be with the Lord. God bless you tonight. Be encouraged. Bow your heads.
If there's anyone here right now, you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ in the pardon of your sins, I want you to repeat this small prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, I'm a sinner. And I need your forgiveness. I confess out of my mouth and believe in my heart that you are Lord and that God raised you from the dead. Come into my heart this day and be Lord of my life. Save me, sanctify me, and fill me with the Holy Ghost. Use me to your glory, to your honor. And for this great gift of salvation, I say thank you, Lord. And for this great gift of salvation, I say thank you, Lord. Now give God a hand, praise. Yeah. We're going to turn you back to the hands of the funeral gallery. God bless you. Everlasting, she has never let me down. She always was there to help me. Her sweetest foe cannot be found. I know sometimes I didn't show you, but what's in my heart will forever live. All the love and kindness that you so freely give. Please know how much I love you. And I hope I can make you see how empty and lost without you I am truly going to be. So thank you, Mom, for loving me and all your understanding, caring. Now I can pass it on to my kids, and the kids in your spirit will keep on glaring. I love you, Mommy. Yeah. And I have a poem from the kids. Nana, to walk into your room and see you smile, she walk over and hug you all the time. You always made us smile. You always had stories to tell us. You showed us that life could be all that bad. There's always a light at the end of the tunnel. You were so strong. You have faith in us all. You had a great spirit even if the day was all dull. You weren't just our Nana, you were our best friend. When we see the sunshine, we know you're happy. When we see that bright star, we know that's, the, that's you watching down on us, on all of us and smiling. How beautiful angel watching over us. Losing you, Nana, broke our heart. And every day without a doubt, we think of you and shed a little tear. But Nina, we love you so much. Yeah. Dad, every time I smile, every time that I shy, I think of your face and the tears escape my eye. Bev, you were my best friend, my one and true confidant. That's not all you were. You was also my second mom. I will make you proud, Bev. I'm going to fulfill your wish. You're going to see me and smile. That's the second daughter promise I give you. Love you. At this time, we're going to be committed here tonight. <coughs> Some of us have shared through passing years a wonderful companionship and fellowship with our faithful sister. We cherish the many blessed and hollow memories that come to us in this moment. Her faithfulness, her friendship, and her consecrated life will continue their radiance and testimony in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, whom she loved and served, we commit her body, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, from dust thou art, and dust thou shalt return. We commit her body to rest knowing that her spirit is with the Lord in his heavenly house. In so doing, we rest our hearts and in fresh confidence, fresh confidence upon the sure and certain hope of the resurrection of life through Jesus Christ, who will transform her lovely body 
that it may be conformed to his glorious body, according to the working by which he is able to subdue all things to himself. This time, just let us all say the Our Father's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Just give our condolences and greater comfort in Jesus Christ. This concludes our services here at the George Lowe's Funeral Hall. I'll be George Lowe's Funeral Hall. And the entire Panaway family, and God bless you.